think it's phenomenal and I love the way you have it set up. I think you have a brand that is unique and just something that is really something I think a lot more people need to take note of because your show is phenomenal. It really truly is. So I, I hope this is helpful, but um, I thought it was fantastic, man. Like literally, like I said in the chat, I took notes on like, dude, I, I need to have like an intro. I need to have, <laughs> you know, like I'm taking notes on how to, I can, I can level up my show. So nice. as an interviewee, super fun interviewer, um, awesome because like, especially I, I have ADHD. So sometimes I forget what I'm saying. And then you're so good about like bringing it back. So thanks for doing that. I gotta tell ya. <laughs> I don't often get nervous because, you know, we're always live streaming and working with a lot of different people. I'm a little nervous with you, JP. Your show is like <laughs> so polished, so good. And the people in the Thank chat you. that are joining us, man, it's I'm really happy Thank to you. be here. JP, JP, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. I just, I am beside myself. I've been bouncing up and down as the, all the intros were going and I was still hearing the music that you were playing in the intro in my mind. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit jacked up, but let's, let's see if I can bring myself down to earth so we can have a really productive conversation today. Um, everything seems like it's all intentional, chosen well. Um, your production, the way you put it together, I believe you can really coach people um, into doing it. And I trust that you'll uniquely hit each person with the knowledge that you have and allow it to custom fit them. Um, you know, like a great basketball coach, you don't make Kobe Bryant, you didn't try to make him Michael Jordan, but you know, you still coach him based on what he brings to the table, but you do your Phil Jackson. And so you kind of like a Phil Jackson of the, the high tech world. And <laughs> I, I believe that. that, you know, people that know that there's somebody uh, can get with you and get the stuff done right. I love it. I love it. This is the show. I appreciate you being here with us. I can't believe it. Mama, I made it. I made it. I made it on JP's high tech show, the you know, content creator university. I'm good now. I'm, I'm about I to know, retire right? after this. <laughs> your personality and your persona is what creates the content. And so not just having people that are just like, oh my gosh, I just create, 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 right, but actually right, talking about right. the whole person, you know, just from a university, just like if you, if you think about from a university, right? We had to take humanities classes, which mm -hmm, I hated. Mm -hmm. You know, we had <laughs> to take too. classes on socialization, <laughs> you know, um, you know, history and, you know, art and all that other stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm taking this, but it helped us fundamentally understand and have a broader perspective and i think that's exactly what the content creator university does really awesome to be here thanks for having me i this is like a super high level production and i feel slightly insecure i feel like i need to level everything up just a little bit the conversation was dope look it, it really was i've been really excited about having this conversation because I, I knew i would get somewhat emotional about it and, and want to make sure i pushed the right buttons with some 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 of the topics that I was talking about. And I think we were able to get that across. Uh, I was noticing in the comments that folks were resonating with, with the message. So uh, look, it, it was what it needed to be. And I think again, it, it all stems from you and the platform that you're building, allowing folks to come into the environment and and and, and share and, and feel welcome. So uh, kudos to you again, just for everything that you're doing on the front end and the back end uh, building the uh, content creator university listen you want to consume these videos go back to his channel and watch these videos because this content is content that would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars in digital courses or what have you um courses that i paid for right are not giving the type of nuggets that i've, I've been able to get from watching uh previous uh, episodes and things of that nature of the content creators university uh, and so i i would implore you to jump on board and really support content creators university it's an amazing thing that uh, jp is doing here What's going on everybody? This is your boy JP Hattech. I am very, very excited to announce to you that the Content Creators University is now available and syndicated on all the top streaming platforms. I'm talking Apple Music, Spotify, 
Audible, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, and the list keep going. You know what we do here every single week. We have one of the top minds in the IT media and content creation ecosystem. They come right here on this platform to share with you and I the secrets for us to keep elevating our value proposition and offering us content creators. And you guys know what I say. The day you stop learning, you stop growing. And this is another opportunity for you to keep learning keep growing and keep impacting content creators university podcast let's go Hey man, this is DJ Strick and you're watching Content Creators University with JP High Tech. Man, don't miss a thing. Stay right here. Yes, yes, Welcome yes. To the show. <laughs> Good to be here, man. Good to be here. This is amazing, man. This space you've created, phenomenal, bro. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm excited to be here, man. Thank excited. You, Content Creators University, man. Woo! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show, Lenita. <laughs> uh, what a pleasant surprise. Thank you for the welcome and for the amazing introduction.
Yo, 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 it's your boy Jay Dunn. Look, you are on Content Creator University. You finally made it. It's live right now. So stay right here because it's about to be crazy. Let's go. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome, folks. Welcome to the Content Creators University. I am your humble servant and host, JP High Tech. Always excited whenever we come here on the place, in the space, right, to talk about amazing things. And whenever we have amazing guests, like a, today, I have another amazing guest, another uh, professional uh, professor, we call him, right? He's backstage to talk to us about something that I know you guys will love, right? The perfectionist mindset. What does that even mean? And how is it that we can be so perfectionist sometimes? Um, is that a hindrance to the things we do? Does that affect us in some way? We're going to talk about all that shortly. But as you guys know, this is a show that we air here every single week. And what this does is it helps you content creators uh, stay rooted because my saying is the day you stop learning, you stop growing. So we always want to keep learning, keep growing, keep evolving. IT uh, technology is this platform that is always evolving, right? There's always something new, something we need to master, understand. And how should we, um, you know, elevate our value proposition and know that what we're doing is still relevant right you could be the smartest person in the room in 2020 and in 2021 if you didn't stay rooted not be so, so smart any longer <laughs> So these are the type of things we do here. And this is for everyone, right? If you do podcasts, you're an author, you're a writer, you're a content creator, YouTuber, you name it, this uh, you know, platform is for you. And I'm pretty sure you guys saw in the ad that the podcast is now available. Yes, sir. The Content Creators University podcast is now syndicated and available worldwide in every platform, right? On every platform, I'm talking Apple TV, um, Apple Music, uh, per se, um, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, you name it. Or you can just go to my website directly, which is jphighttech.com forward slash podcast. I am very, very excited about this. And I know um, a lot of you guys have been supporting, but for those of you who didn't know, well, now you do, right? <laughs> Another platform um, that I'm always excited to talk about is our TV platform that this show airs on, right? For example, I am broadcasting this show with my encoder, which is Ecamm, but um, this show is also broadcasted live simultaneously, not just on YouTube and Facebook, but also on my website and on Roku TV. You heard me right away. Right? This is live on my Roku TV application and my Fire TV application. So I always want to take the time and give a Shout out uh, to all my viewers. Those are on your TV in your living room right now, relaxing. You have a popcorn or something, you're just enjoying um, and watching this on your big flat screen TV. I want to appreciate you and say thanks for joining us here every single week. This is something we do not take for granted. And we want to thank you for all the support and love. Um, and this is how we do it, right? This is the platform. Let's connect, let's elevate what we do, and let's impact in a different way. The model here is create impact and innovate so the thing is how do we create impact and innovate we're about to talk about that today and as you know this is also listener supported and sponsored supported right um that's why we always want to take the time to thank our sponsors and one of our sponsors on this platform is rtn streams right rtnstreams.com um, is the solution i am using to broadcast my show live on roku tv as a matter of fact that's what i used to even build and have my own roku tv application and fire tv application and also simultaneously broadcast it on my website if you want to check it out go ahead and visit rtnstreams.com or if you're just looking for a free overlay, right, high quality overlay, just like the one I have in this video, I'm digging it. You want to go ahead and visit the website as well, which is rtnstreams.com. Let me go ahead and run the ad and you check it out and we'll be right back. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. Be right back. All right, all right. This is what we're talking about today. This is the guest behind stage, Alec Johnson. Uh, he's a content creator and he is a perfectionist, or should I say he has a perfectionist mindset? And 
this is very interesting to me and I want to bring him on stage so we can talk about it and see exactly what this is all about. What does that even mean and how does that affect us as content creators? Before I do that, um, I just want to let you guys know. There's another sponsor that we have on this show that's allowing us to keep airing this every week. And that sponsor is Reveal TV Network. It's a family-friendly platform if you're a Christian or a family, a friendly person just like me. I'm a family dad. Um, I love my family. You want to check it out, right? It's like your Netflix for Christian, you stream faith-based movies and TV shows. It's called Reveal TV Network. And you can, you know, get yourself a seven-day free trial just by visiting revealtv.net, right? Revealtv.net. Let me go ahead and run the ad. And right after that, we will be receiving our one and only Alec Johnson. Let's get started. Let's go. Welcome to the show. I like how you doing. I'm doing great. Thanks. It's a real honor and pleasure to be here. Oh, absolutely. The pleasure is, uh, you know, shared here. I feel that is an honor to have you on the platform. And like we always do, right? This is Content Creators University. And what we do is every single week we receive a professor, right? And today you are going to be our professor. <laughs> Uh, no, no pressure. You're going to, <laughs> yes, sir. I know, right? No pressure. <laughs> We're about to learn more about your story, what you do, your background, how you ended up doing the things you're doing today. And then on the second part of the show, talk about this perfectionist mindset that um, I've heard and that you deal with, right? Um, very interesting things. But before we get it started, right, one question that we always ask all of our guests to, uh, to share their background. Let our listeners and viewers know who exactly you are, where you're calling from, uh, so you can introduce yourself to them, please. Okay, so uh, my, I'm from the UK originally, living in Thailand. My uh, my background is in sort of design and engineering. So although I'm fairly new to YouTube, I say that I am a lifelong creator, designer, and problem solver. Uh, my background is actually in uh, uh, engineering, as I say, so I studied engineering at university and my first sort of proper job that wasn't bussing tables uh, was uh, an engineering job for a uh, defense contractor uh, who designed guidance systems for missiles. And then since then, I've gone through a series of uh, sort of career paths. <laughs> uh, hmm. But uh, recently, for the past 16 years that I've been living in Thailand, we've had a, an architectural design and construction company. Um, and then the last last couple of years, I've also been looking at uh, de developing algorithmic uh, trading systems for the U.S. stock uh, stock and options markets, basically. So uh, mm -hmm. those are some some of the uh, the things that I've been doing. But they're quite diverse. But at the same time, they're all basically um, creation, uh, creative uh, roles. <laughs> sure is, sure is, absolutely. They are eclectic and diverse. Uh, I've noticed uh -huh. that. And as you were talking, I was like, huh. How does uh, an engineer, right, <laughs> a software guy, ends up doing content creation like this, right? Uh, being a full time or per se, at least an, an avid YouTuber or content creator. Mm -hmm. How did you end up doing this? You want to share that with us a little bit? Yeah, sure. So one of the uh, well, another uh, company that uh, uh, I'm a partner in is a, a social media advertising and marketing company, and I'm my sort of role in that is that I'm the uh, the sort of systems and processes guy who sort of systemized the whole process, um, mm -hmm. and so I created a, a course around that for uh, to help basically small businesses who didn't want to come and employ an agency to do their social media marketing, but they wanted to grow their online presence. I, I created a course around that. And I did that um, actually by recording it and editing it. And then I was looking for a way to uh, to basically streamline the process and remove mm -hmm. me from the uh, the <laughs> editing process. And so that's when I discovered Ecamm Live. And uh, I wanted to sort of practice this whole process of uh, just creating videos 
ad hoc with that, uh, without a huge amount of planning. Uh, and so that's where the, uh, the sort of take one of my, uh, <laughs> my YouTube name, Take One Tech, comes in because all of my videos are just basically I sit down and create them off the cuff with no, uh, with no planning as such. And so that's the YouTube channel was basically an exercise in uh, self-development and self-discipline to get into that process and hmm. basically uh, develop that skill, I suppose powerful things that you're saying self-development and self-discipline right um and that that means that you have to be disciplined in order to be able to achieve the things that you're doing and you have to self-develop yourself in order to have mm -hmm. the mechanics um and the understanding of the mechanics surrounding uh, going live creating content and publishing your content that you're creating and on top of that what you're doing like you just said you do it in one take which is hard to do right uh because mm -hmm. <laughs> hey the beauty of post uh processing work is to edit out all the all the bad or the, the spills and th things you don't want people to see but whenever you do a live like right now you don't have a redo right like you're live yeah. so if you mess up live that's it, right? So uh, it requires a lot of preparation work, a lot of groundwork. Uh, so let me ask mm -hmm. you, how do you plan, right? What are the uh, things you go over? Do you have like a cheat sheet or something that you go over before you start? How, how do you process your, 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 your train of thought before you start recording? Uh, so I've got a, uh, a list of videos that I want to make um, and then I basically just, you know, decide which one I'm going to make. I do have a, a checklist that I go through before I actually start recording. But in terms of the uh, the actual preparation, I don't do any scripting or anything like that. I just think all, all of my videos are basically uh, tutorials. So I just think about how I would explain it to uh, to somebody else and then just do oh, it really. Okay. <laughs> so it is, it is pretty much <laughs> off the cuff. There's not a lot of uh, preparation goes into that side of it. The, uh, the preparation came in in terms of sort of planning the channel out, I suppose, and getting things like my uh, thumbnails and things like that, templates mm -hmm. all created, so that when I come to record, it's just a case of hit the record button and, and do it. Obviously, there's sometimes a bit of preparation in terms of if I'm talking about a particular application or something, then it, getting the windows open and arranging them and so on. But uh, I really am trying to do it as raw as possible, that it's just a case of sitting down and making a video. <laughs> Right. That is very interesting. Now, uh, one question that I had, Mark, here that I wanted to ask you is why? Why is it that you just want to do it, not just in one take, but for the folks that do not know, you want to do 100 videos in 100 days. Tell us a little bit about that. So that was, uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a, a goal to set because I knew that if I if I uh, if I didn't set a goal, then obviously you uh, you don't uh, achieve things that you don't uh, set yourself a goal for. Uh, but mm -hmm. secondly, it's a case of I just wanted to have a sort of really rapid uh, development, ra rapid self development of this process, and so wanted to get into the habit of doing it. So I'm currently at day. Uh, my last day is basically on Sunday, so uh, hmm. that will be my hundredth day, uh, and I'll. I'll meet my uh, my target, but it was a case of being able to have a look at the channel after 100 uh, videos to then get some sort of concrete uh, uh, results, basically, and see how the uh, the channels progressed over that time. Because part of the uh, exercise as well is to actually see what happens if you try and grow a YouTube channel organically by posting consistently. So mm -hmm. 100 videos seem like a good sort of uh, milestone to uh, gauge and step back and have a little uh, look at where I want to go with it next or how I want to develop the, uh, you know, the overlays, all those sorts of things. So I'll probably do a bit of tweaking very, at day 100. <laughs> very interesting. I like very interesting what you're doing now. I'm wondering, um, how has it been so far? Like, how's your experience? Because I mean, literally, you have to release a video every single day. Now, how are you doing it? Are you, for example, taking one day out of the week recording uh, several videos? Or are you literally doing it every day. How are you organizing this? Because some people work um, and have other things just like you, right? You have a day job and other things. How do you manage that in order to be able to release a video every single day for 100 days? Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, I'm not doing necessarily every day, but I'm just releasing a total of 100. So some days I've released more, some oh, okay. days I don't release one. Uh, but I also, I always put them out as soon as I've done them. So occasionally if I make, you know, three or four videos in one day, then I might stagger them by a few hours, but I'm not that, uh, not that fussed about exact times. I'm not looking for the, the best time to launch them or anything like that to, uh, to publish them. 
but I'm just basically doing them as I, as I create them. But in terms of the, the time, basically I, I wake up at three o'clock every morning and I do my morning meditation and journaling between three and four and then four mm -hmm. until six was always my, uh, my sort of self-development time. I used to think of it. So I used to do all my reading and learning and stuff like that. And that was before my, uh, my kids get up. So it's a nice quiet period in the morning. So I've basically <laughs> right. now allotted that two hours every day to my, uh, to my content creation, basically. So that's the time that I spend to do my YouTube. Hmm. So sometimes I'll get one video done. Sometimes I'll get a couple done and then I just put them out as and when I do them. Wow. Wow. Interesting. And I know uh, you've released some, uh, you know, because you do a lot of tech tutorial videos, I've taken the time to go on your YouTube channel, but I've noticed that um, you've recorded like an entire tutorial about Ecamm from <laughs> like a novice will start using it from beginning to end on how to master Ecamm, which is well phenomenal, but it took you at least two or three hours, if I'm not mistaken, right? Is that it, correct? It, it was four, four and a half hours. So I sat oh down and just God. recorded four and a half hours. <laughs> And that was uh, under one take as well, like nonstop, one time recording, yep. no post, post processing work or anything. Was that it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did actually pause Ecamm uh, part way through when my uh, one of my, uh, my my son ran in, so I, I paused it for about ten minutes. But then essentially, it's yeah, just one take with no no editing or anything like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> that is phenomenal. I mean, it is crazy to do, but these are the type of things that I, I love, right, from content creators because, I mean, it's just genius to think outside of the box and start doing things like that. Now, um, as a business guy, do you believe that these things that you've been doing so far, uh, do you believe it truly helped jumpstart your YouTube career and truly organically bring people into your space uh, to help you grow? Uh, what is your honest opinion and feedback on your experience so far yeah so all of my my sort of uh, professional background has definitely all helped with the the channel so there's lots of things that you know i've done in the past in terms of uh, uh design graphic design things like that that have obviously influenced the uh, you know allowed me to be able to create some of the uh, you know the graphic overlays and stuff like that so it has all fed into it but i've specifically not been trying to bring in anybody that i, I know so i haven't actually told anybody I, I don't post on my public facebook page about it or on my profile so i've got you know four or five thousand people are, uh, friends on facebook but i don't tell them about it because i'm i'm, I'm trying to see what uh, can happen if you do just post consistently. So I'm trying to get that organic growth rather than bring people on who are maybe just, you know, friends or friends of friends Bias and, things like that. and things like that. Right. <laughs> okay. But now, yeah, one thing that my background all helped. I know, right? <laughs> one thing that Alec, um, some people that are watching and for, for, for the listeners, um, if you can, you cannot see this, you will have to hop on YouTube to my YouTube channel here, JP Hat Tech Reviews, in order to see this interview with Alec, the perfectionist mindset with Alec Johnson. But what I'm about to talk about is your background right now is a green screen, correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man, that's what I want you to talk about, because uh, we've heard how uh, almost impossible it is to use a green screen and have such an elegant setup. Right. And your, your, your background is, is pretty nice. Right. Uh, I want you oh, to you. talk to us about that in just a minute. Before we do that, um, let me go ahead and give some shout out to some of our, uh, you know, live visitors and people that are coming in the comment section uh, right there. I have Angelica Prather. Hey, Angelica, thanks for joining us here in the comment section. I appreciate you i have cree first lady queen cree thanks for being here and i see challenge um itv uh he said excited to be here i like uh to see alec on the show as a matter of fact thanks for being here challenge tv thanks a lot we appreciate your presence in the comment section hey rich rich um how's it going rich graham we appreciate you being in the comment section um and commenting here live and the paul duncan hey 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 to you as well uh, yes indeed uh, mr alec in the house that is what we're getting here i appreciate you and of course the one and only james hicks hey james how's he going thanks you thanks you guys for being here right uh guys if you're just joining us go ahead and put a comment in the comment section below we're here with alec uh having an awesome conversation now alec first thing why green screen tell me about that 
So I use this setup for uh, for my channel, but also for uh, work as well. So I have different meetings and things like that. And originally, when I was creating the uh, the course that I mentioned earlier, that one had a different background as well or a different setting. So I didn't want to necessarily create a sort of studio with a specific uh, specific background for all of those different uh, use cases. So a green screen just worked. And also, when I started making videos for the, uh, the, the, the course previously, I was also traveling quite a lot. So I wanted to have a, mm. a, a, a consistent background wherever I was. So sometimes I'd be in different hotel rooms or in uh, different locations. So having a green screen just meant that I would always have that consistent look and people didn't need to be distracted by where I was or the, uh, the background or anything like that. So that is originally why I went down the, uh, this, this route. <laughs> makes sense makes sense of course so you can have a multi-usage for the same set as you're changing the images in the background now for yeah, the yeah. folks that may not believe us right because we always get those skeptical folks right that will be like no that's not a green screen can you prove it to them that it is indeed a green <laughs> screen no problem <laughs> this is fantastic there we go folks <laughs> as you can see there he is this is a true true green screen that is fantastic <laughs> um, now lighting wise because i know to have a perfect um green screen you have to have a proper light up uh lighting scenario how did you set your lights and what lights are you actually using uh -huh. so i'm not actually using anything special nothing flashy they're just um hmm. like the uh, a bit like the uh, newer um standard soft boxes that you get nothing uh, nothing too expensive but i've got two of those pushed back into the uh, the corner of the room but then i've also got them angled up slightly so i'm getting them reflecting off the ceiling as well to get a bit of light on the top but then mm. because in the background i've got a purple and blue uh, sort of lights in the in the uh, the scene i've also got okay. a couple of uh, little ulanzi uh, they're just a the little 10 dollar ulanzi uh, lights mm -hmm. that are actually uh, with a like a cold shoe that normally go on the top of a, a camera or something, but I've just got uh, a couple of those sort of. So one of them's got a blue, a purple tinge on it, and one of them a blue, so that the color on me is matching what's in the background as well. So there's that sort of consistency there. And then I also have a, a light at the bottom of the green screen that's actually lighting the green screen from the bottom, and that's also reflecting from the top. So it gives me this sort of. Uh, uh, I suppose I was going to say hair light, but obviously I don't have that <laughs> that, that requirement. <laughs> right. And all that is managed right now by Ecamp, correct? Like you're literally using Ecamp software um, to remove yes, yeah. the green screen and add your images. Uh, that's it. Nothing else, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Wow. This is this is interesting. Well, hey, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, see you show us a little bit if that's okay i want you to go in demo mode right and show us exactly for the folks that are interested in understanding exactly what you're doing go in demo mode show us your desktop and how where you put the images and how you actually because that's what you do tutorials so how you actually bring it in the image and remove the green screen for the folks that want to learn a little bit sure sure let me uh come into here here we go all right so here I am in uh, demo mode. So uh, this is uh, my screen's probably a bit large because it's still on 4K at the moment. But uh, I normally downscale it if I'm in mm -hmm. uh, demo mode. But basically, this is the uh, the Ecamm Live um, uh, camera effects. So here right. you can change the green screen and toggle it on and off. Uh, let me just bring this one down. There here. we go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can adjust the uh, the color temperature and things like that. I'm currently running the uh, the beta as well. Uh, so that's got a couple of other features in, which is uh, a really, uh, really great. But uh, yeah, this is basically where I'm just adding in the uh, the green screen effect. And I did previously use um, OBS. I tried to go down that route and uh, rapidly gave it up. Um, but what I found was in Ecamm Live, it's so much easier to just, uh, I mean, you can see that there is adjustment on the green screen, so you can change mm -hmm. it. But I've never really had to adjust the settings in Ecamm Live. It just sort of works straight out of the box, I've found. So uh, now let me yeah, ask you this. Uh, where are you keeping the image? Like, how are you adding the image to the background? So you're keeping oh, the see. image in the overlays or where exactly? No, it's uh, so I just you just uh, drag the uh, the image onto the uh, this this panel here. So for the uh, the green screen. So if I if I've got a uh, let me see, I'll just drag this one. This is an mm -hmm. uh, this is just a, a, it's actually a thumbnail, but I'll just okay. demonstrate with this. So you can just literally drag and drop it, and then there we go. Now huh. I'm in front of my my thumbnail. <laughs> nice, so nice. Just, uh, just drag just... and drop. 
Oh, nice. So you can just mm-hmm. replace it like that and you're yep. good to go. <laughs> Any image. Now, the background that I'm looking at, was it um, strategically thought of um, in regards to the image that you have in your background for your set or you just improvised? Uh, I actually had this image because it's a, it's not even a real picture. It's actually a CGI. So I can change the uh, the color of all the lights and things like that. And originally I had the thought that perhaps I might um, have different uh, color tones depending on what I was doing on the uh, the channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, maybe sort of different moods for different things. But in the end, I've ended up just sticking with this one. So I just wanted something that was a bit of a uh, bit colorful, had a bit of interest and uh, it that works. was it really. <laughs> <laughs> It works. All right, Alec. Thanks a lot. You can go ahead and take yourself off of this. Let me uh, place you back here. So you looking good. Um, but this is this is really, really interesting. I mean, uh, when I think about the things that you can do as content creators where uh, you don't have a natural studio, but you can use an image and simply have a green screen set and just replace it using softwares. Technology has come a long way. Right. Um, so let me ask you this. Right. Your green screen. Does it just stay there in your studio? It never moves. And every time you go to work, you just change the images or you take it down. Is this the mobile type? Uh, this one is uh, is fixed. So I, I've made a, a like a, a full green screen. So it's just here all the time. So I'm uh, currently in my uh, my my studio, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's actually just my basement. So since last year, I looked for you know needed to have somewhere quiet. So uh, we don't have a, an office. In, I live in the northeast of Thailand, but we had an office in Bangkok. So I would trans uh, like go backwards and forwards between here and Bangkok. Uh, but now that we, uh, we're not have using the, uh, the office because obviously <laughs> what's happened in 2020. Uh, right. So uh, I just sort of set myself up here with the space. So it's uh, just nice and quiet and tucked away at the back of the, uh, the basement. And yeah, got the green screen up here all the time. So I can just switch between different, uh, different backgrounds. Very interesting. All right. Sounds good. Now we're about to get into the second part of the show where we'll be talking about this perfectionist mindset uh, that you say you have and and how that is. Uh, first of all, want to understand what that means and how that may or may not affect us as content creators right before this uh, break. We'll be right back, folks. Stay with us. This is Todd. Hi. This is Todd's mom. Hi. In a moment, Todd's mom will read her son's Internet browsing history. What? Aloud, please. Uh, no. Supermodels on trampolines.com. Why don't girls like me? How to overcome an overbearing mother. Okay, cut, cut. If you wouldn't want mom looking through your web history, why would you let hackers, ad companies, or your internet and cellular provider do the same thing? Why does my junk burn? They can track and record everything you do online, but not if you have ExpressVPN. Why did you buy a $200 ninja outfit? For fighting. ExpressVPN apps keep your activity and identity private while you browse, stream, email, or download. Protect all of your devices with just one click. Are my hands small? Okay, I'm done. You guys are all terrible people. ExpressVPN, take back your privacy today. Hi, I'm Charles Jackson with Charles Jackson Media, a consultancy connecting people, passion, and purpose. And we are proud sponsors of Content Creators University, brought to you by JP Hitech. You know how people struggle to connect in their personal relationships? Well, I help them break through those barriers so that they can have happy and healthy relationships with themselves, with family members, colleagues, and people from diverse backgrounds. I serve individuals, brands, and organizations looking for better ways to connect. My approach keeps the whole person in mind. That is why we have several points of entry. I connect via social media outlets, in person and virtual workshops, speaking engagements, video and traditional podcasts, and coaching all centered around our three-step relational leadership model for connecting with people across differences. So I invite you to connect with me on any of your favorite social media platforms. I'm at Charles Jackson Media or on the web at charlesjackson.media. You should also subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all of our video chat series. Thanks for connecting and enjoy the rest of Content Creators University.
<laughs> All right, guys. First thing I want to thank our sponsors. They just watched Charles Jackson Media for supporting this show and allowing us to be on air here every single week. We appreciate that. And thanks for being a, such a great sponsor. And for those of you who want to connect with him, like he said in the video, go ahead and visit his website, which is charlesjackson.media. If you want to learn how to build a professional studio, the mechanics surrounding live or video production, content creation, which microphone lens combination, setup, lighting, so much that goes into being a professional streamer or having a professional set for content creation or other things, um, you want to connect with him. Again, his website is charlesjackson.media. And also, I want to go ahead and thank our sponsor, ExpressVPN, right? Go ahead and get yourself three months of ExpressVPN by visiting the website expressvpn.com forward slash JP Hatech. For my followers and listeners, go ahead and get yourself three months free. Why would you use a VPN? Well, VPN is, a, uh, is called Virtual Private Network. And that is what you will use, right? That will create that level of encryption onto your online or web presence. Today, more than ever, we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect our investment um, and our information. You do not want to be at risk of any glitch or any anything to be leaked to the web, right? And sadly, the more people are using the web, the more uh, you have those ill-intentioned folks that want to, you know, uh, break your system and really hack into your things or, or steal private information. As you know, identity um, theft is a big deal uh, in today's society so go ahead and protect yourself um it is phenomenal i can install it on my phone tablet and computer and it does not break the bank again expressvpn.com forward slash jp tech and get yourself free three month pretty pretty cool stuff right for those of you just joining us, we have been with Alec Johnson and Alec Johnson. Um, we've been talking about uh, just chatting with him about his background, how he ended up from being an engineer to a content creator. And also he showed us uh, his amazing studio setup uh, using a green screen and having a clear uh, background that really uh, is innovative as a content creator. Really interesting to see those type of things. But the title of this show is The Perfections Mindset, right? So well, let me go ahead and bring him on stage. Hey. Hey, Alec, <laughs> welcome back here. Hey. So we're talking about the perfectionist mindset. First thing I want to ask you is, what does that even mean to be a perfectionist? So we can lay that foundation. Uh, well, obviously, striving to have everything uh, as good as it can possibly be, uh, void of any defects, <laughs> is the way I would describe <laughs> it. Uh, and in my sort of uh, professional life, that's always been something that's been, in my mind, you know, absolutely critical. Uh, I mean, thinking about building somebody's dream house, for example, there's no good it being, you know, almost there, but not quite. It, perfectionism is, uh, per perfection is what we're always sort of striving for when we hand over a house to somebody. Uh, and the same with some of the more, you know, uh, engineering roles, there, there is sort of no, uh, no uh, huge tolerances that, uh, to work to there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. Now, let me ask you, um, Having that mindset, right, having the perfectionist mindset as a content creator, how does that affect you? Is it a positive experience or would you say it's more of an unknowing experience as a content creator? I think it can be uh, very limiting for some people. So this is part of the uh, the. The reason for the channel as well is to help me sort of, uh, I call myself a recovering perfectionist. And the, mm -hmm. cha the channel was basically the first step in that uh, because actually there's not a lot in my channel that I'm totally happy with. I'm not happy about the the website, the content, the, you know, my delivery and all of these things. Uh, but I've, uh, I sort of released the, uh, the, the limitation that I had before where I felt like things did need to actually be perfect to put them out. So, uh, you know, my thumbnails are not, uh, not by any stretch, uh, you know, close to perfect for me and things like that. It's at every level there is, um, there is a, a series of imperfections, but I'm happy with being unhappy about it now. And that is the sort of the difference I had, but okay, I do think I that uh, it's not, not entirely all negative to have a perfectionist mindset you know mm -hmm. if, it, if it's holding you back is one thing but the other side of it is if you aim for perfection and you fall slightly short then maybe you're you know you hit 80 90 95 percent whereas if you aim for you know mediocrity then <laughs> you're you're only ever going to be average so <laughs> i think it can Obviously. be good as a driver for performance 
Absolutely. I mean, in everything we do, I say that in everything we do, we need to work in excellence, right? We need to have an excellence mm -hmm. mindset in every single thing we do. And especially as content creators, we need to aim for the 100%. Uh, you may not always get the 100%, but because yes. you aimed high, your delivery will be better an average, which is very mm -hmm. crucial because um, I, I always say content creators, we innovate and we make people dream, right? We sell that dream. Um, and, and it is important to think outside the box, to, to sit down and create something and really um, make people dream, help people have a good time and entertain um, and, and connect with people like that. So that is really, really, really nice that, uh, you know, we can do those type of things. Now, let me ask you, though, honestly. Um, you said, and I repeat it again, that you're a recovering perfectionist. What does that even mean? Take it to time. Explain that to me again. What does right. that truly mean? <laughs> so that is recovering from the limiting aspect of uh, perfectionism. So that is where before in my uh, professional life, I would aim perf perf uh, for perfection, but we would obviously always deliver things. Whereas for things in my personal life, like this YouTube channel, for, for example, um, it's the sort of thing that often I would spend too much time tweaking the fine details and it would delay you know getting out and getting over that line and so when i talk about recovering perfectionists i'm talking about recovering from the negative aspect of it uh, mm. and just being able to get over that that hurdle of actually uh being okay with putting something out knowing that it's uh, you know <laughs> it's not perfect basically um right. and part of the uh part of the the sort of um uh, the, the therapy, if you like, of doing this channel is the realization that, you know, all of the things that we have uh, for ourselves, or I, I should talk about myself, the, um, you know, the assumptions of what people are going to think if things aren't perfect, what you uh, realize is that actually most people, even if they do notice, they don't care, but most people don't notice all of the small details that, you know, I personally would notice, you know, the, the flaws and the errors in everything. And it was when I started to, uh, create the videos and things like that and I started getting the feedback from people commenting mm -hmm. or emailing me and saying how uh, how useful they'd been and realizing that I was actually making a difference for some people and they didn't really care about you know the alignment of my uh, <laughs> <laughs> text on my thumbnails or the delivery and things like that and people are very forgiving of uh, you know of any minor imperfections <laughs> This is very serious, and I'm loving what the First Lady Cree uh, is saying. She says sometimes we overthink things too much. Oftentimes we just need to take the first step, and the rest will follow. And that is where I wanted to take a, a step and add to what Alec is saying, right? Because a, a lot of times, some some of us, you know, um, and I know as content creators, are uh, we've suffered from this uh, at, at some point in our career where we just want everything to be perfect to this our own standard right we just want all, everything put together we're like you know what i want to have uh the ten thousand dollar camera and and the four thousand dollar lens uh, with the twenty thousand dollar studio uh, until i get all those things i'm not going to start i'm not going to do anything or i'm not going to publish um, any content or create anything or make allow anybody to see because i i do not have the ideal setup the ideal production and everything and that um oftentimes can can create problem to us as content creators is because the thing is you have a message and a lot of times the message or the information you need to share now it needs to be shared at a specific time the timing of the things that we're producing and releasing is crucial uh, for the people that might be looking for it right um, it might be something vital that needed to be shared um, in this year like 2021 but because you waited too long now it's 2022 is not as relevant anymore right as content creators so the time of what we're doing is very important so to add to what Alec is saying, I say, just do it, right? Just do it and keep improving as you're doing it. Keep improving as you're creating, as you're uh, podcasting or publishing things and people will connect with you and you will learn from it because I say one thing is, even though we want it perfect, the journey allows us to learn as well. We're also learning as the people are learning from our story and, and connected with us. So, that is one aspect that I really, really appreciate uh, from this mindset. Now, one last question I want to ask you before uh, we head to the closing here is, um, okay, what about the person, right, that is out there that is truly, truly suffering from this thing and that he's like, okay, 
I'm struggling with confidence. I'm struggling with certain things, and I believe I can only get that once everything is perfect to my standard. How did you, as a recovering perfectionist, how did you overcome it? Because we got to talk about that. Can you share with us a little bit? Sure. So there's uh, there's two sort of things about this. And just coming back to what you were saying about the uh, having all of the gear and everything like that, I made mm -hmm. a point of trying not to to go down that route. So my camera is a 10 year old Canon EOS 60D, so it's nothing new. <laughs> oh. And up until last week, I was using a 2013 MacBook Pro to run all of this. So I didn't upgrade nice. anything as such to, to to do all of this. I did invest in a microphone. That was the first thing that I bought just for the uh, for the channel because audio I think is the most important thing to get right mm -hmm. but then it's a case of uh, yeah not I'd specifically not going down the route of getting all of the sort of latest and greatest um, but you will get some people who say you know to go to to get over the uh, the perfectionism just go live with your phone or something like that on Facebook or in YouTube but I also don't subscribe to that I think that it's a case of mm -hmm. setting yourself a minimum viable product which is what you you know the, the 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 lowest that you would be happy with to put out there knowing that it's like a step towards that path towards the perfectionist goal that you might have uh, and get that clear in your mind first and then wait till you've got that so although i started uh, my sort of youtube channel in 2000 in, uh, in uh, 15th of may i actually mm -hmm. spent two or three weeks before that getting all of the uh, things set up in terms of the website and and so on getting all of those ready before i actually made the first video but i did set a date of when i was going to go live for the first time and put my first video out so uh that's in terms of setting some goals. But the other thing I think around this perfectionism is, uh, or perfectionist mindset is in some ways it's in, ingrained in a fear of failure in some way. It's uh, a fear of, uh, you know, I like everything to look straight and perfect and neat and everything, but there's an element of it, which is uh, this, this sort of fear of failure if you put it out and it's not, uh, not good enough. Uh, and if you sort of reframe that as it's not a fear of failure, it's actually a fear of embarrassment. So it's a fear of what mm -hmm. you think other people might think. And embarrassment is basically just what you think somebody else is thinking about you. Uh, hmm. And so because we're often our own worst critics, this fear of embarrassment is actually uh, your fear of like your own worst image of yourself, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the way that you can be so self-critical of ourselves. And right. if you realize that actually in the, in the community, in the creator community, everybody's actually really supportive and compassionate. And so, you know, the, the way to look at it is actually if you start and, you know, you don't quite live up to your own harsh expectations of yourself, actually everyone will be there to catch you and support you and uh, lift you up again. So that's another very, sort of aspect. Very true. This is so true. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. It is true. There is a, such a support um, in the creative uh, community, in the content creation community where we support each other. Right. We, we show up for each other. Um, you may not have a huge public or following, but you have the community that will be showing up for you, uh, encouraging you to keep pushing, to keep creating and keep showing up, not just for them, but mainly for yourself. Because as you're showing up for yourself, like we were discussing last week with Jay Dunn, um, as you're doing that, then the traffic, the organic traffic and everybody will be following you because, right, not just the algorithm, but uh, people will notice that, okay, this is something that I can set my calendar on and I can go with that. Even though it's not perfect, even though it's not the ideal thing you want, you still, uh, pushing the conversation forward and you still having the presence, which is very, very vital. Well, we've gotten to the end of our show. We cannot let you go without asking you, where are the places where people that want to connect with you socially, um, where are those places and spaces you spend your time? Let us know so that we can share that with our listeners and viewers, please. Obviously, the YouTube channel, uh, Take One Tech. Uh, so just go to youtube.com slash Take One Tech or my website, takeonetech.io, links to all of those, uh, those other places as well. So that's probably the easiest, uh, easiest way to find me. Absolutely. And he is also on social media. Uh, he's on Facebook. Um, like he said, go ahead and connect with him. Alec Johnson on Facebook. Uh, hey, Alec, I want to thank you. Please stay behind stage as I go ahead and close with uh, my team here. Um, and folks, this is it. Content Creators University. Uh, amazing conversation again with Alec Johnson in regards to the perfection mindset, understanding the things that might be limiting us uh, from doing the things that we know.
we need to do right we've been waiting a long time to do uh, if you like this type of videos go ahead and smack the like button at the bottom there and share this with a friend or family member that might be suffering from similar things right uh, share the podcast share the video and if you listen to the podcast hop on youtube and look for us is jp high tech reviews j p h i g h t e k reviews um and find us on youtube and let's connect let's keep this conversation going we'll be back next week for another video or another podcast you'll be safe like i, I always say shalom bye bye guys <laughs>